If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you don't miss any new episodes. Hello there YouTube, Dr. Carlo Ojer with DrER.TV. In this video, we're going to be answering a question from Angel Eyes Fam, which states the following. I love that you do these videos. It is so cool. I feel like I'm becoming a doctor. I know you're super busy, but can you go over diverticulitis? I have lots of problems with it and they want to do surgery. It's got the eye-opening emoji. Please, please, can you explain it a bit better? Thank you. You're a truly awesome doctor. Well, angel eyes for my fan and for that text uh, message. Absolutely, I will talk about diverticulitis. Now, I already have some videos that go specific for diverticulitis, but they're more scripted and uh, more of the education for everybody else. But let's talk about your particular case. Well, let's talk first about diverticulitis. Well, diverticulitis stands for diverticula and then itis. Itis means inflammation or infection. So what you have actually right now is diverticulosis with episodes of diverticulitis. Diverticulosis is the chronic condition. You have your large bowel usually more in the distal bowel near the rectal area, the sigmoid colon specifically. That's where 90% of diverticula occur. They're more common in the U.S. because of our Western diet being more constipating. So they increase intraluminal pressures over time, leads to these little dilations on the bowel wall. If you imagine one of those balloons that the magicians do little figurines with, that is your bowel, the balloon. And if you kind of like stretch the wall, you'll get this little dilation spots on the balloon. So imagine hundreds of those in your column. When you look at the column from the inside, it's got all these little holes. And they're actually little pedunculated little sacs. And those sacs, uh, obviously, is a weakened spot of the wall. So from inflammation or infection or deposit of particles, they become inflamed. And when they become inflamed, they can become frile and rupture. If rupture or inflammation occurs into the bowel, you create an infection next to it, and that's peritonitis, inflammation of the lining of the covering of the bowel, the peritoneum. Uh, and you can get an abscess, an abscess of focal infection, just like we do all those abscess videos, but you get that in the abdomen. So obviously, if you've had problems with diverticulitis many times, that means that your diverticula are very predisposed to weakening and breaking. And if they're talking about surgeries because you've had multiple episodes or, or maybe just one very bad complicated episode, and what they want to do, what they want to achieve with surgery is to cut the disease segment, the segment that has all the diverticular or most of the diverticular, and then join the two segments together. Therefore, these areas that don't have diverticular bring it together. So you will have essentially a short bowel. And short bowel can develop into short bowel syndrome, which can lead to malabsorption syndromes, vitamin deficiencies, diarrhea. But it would get rid of this diverticulitis because you don't have the diverticula anymore. All right. Now, just because they take that segment out doesn't mean you couldn't get it again. The diverticula also occurs in 10% of the cases in other parts, even on the right side of the abdomen, which is rare, but it can happen. So, I mean, the question is whether or not you should have or not have the surgery. I would say have the surgery. If you've had complicated cases or multiple cases of diverticulitis, the likelihood you're gonna keep getting them, it's very high. And it's not the kind of disease where you can say, I'm just gonna be real careful with my diet and uh, I, I will heal my diverticula. Not really, because the diverticula is this dilated, weakened spots in the bowel wall, and there's no way to, to make them go away. They're already dilated, they already cause these pedunculated lesions in the bowel, and they will just be there. So the likelihood you're gonna get this again and again, and if you're young and healthy now, in your 30s and 40s with little medical problems, this is the time to do a surgery like that, when there's no infection, when they can get in there, cut it, get it together, and heal. If you wait till you're really sick or you're older, the complication rate is gonna increase. And I'm gonna be back in just a minute. And we're back. So um, whether or not you should have the surgery, and the reason is I would have the surgery. Uh, I know surgery is the abdomen, you know, it's a big surgery. Some people end up with a colostomy. If there's complications, they find something, they divert too much bowel, then you get a bag and then they gotta leave the bag and you gotta poop in the bag for weeks or even months until things heal, and then go back and do a re-anastomosis. So that's a second surgery. So obviously it's a big deal. 
But if your surgeon's already talking about surgery, then probably you do need it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should tell you about diverticulitis. Obviously, it's being very aware of the symptoms of diverticulitis, which I'm sure you well know. Localized abdominal pain, fevers, chills, uh, pain when you try to defecate or have bowel movement, peritonitis, like very sensitive pain to coughing, sneezing, movements, and stuff like that. Those are signs of peritonitis. So at the very first signs of diverticulitis, you should start antibiotics early. That'll prevent you from having to be admitted to the hospital. Uh, and diverticulitis can be treated as an outpatient. The problem is when there's it's severe pain or severe symptoms or severe peritonitis symptoms, then we worry about a phlegmon, which is a localized fluid collection or an abscess forming. In this case, you need a percutaneous drainage, usually under CT scan, put a needle in your abdomen and then drain this infection out. Or sometimes they have to go in and open up and clean it up and you use antibiotics intra-abdominally and then close things up. So, so you definitely want to avoid that kind of uh, emergency surgery for acute perforated diverticulitis because that is a life-threatening disease, life-threatening condition. So if you're healthy and you're well and we catch you for elective surgery during one of these episodes, then I probably would want that done. Like I said, you can protect yourself and make sure you have a good diet. That means a non-constipating diet, lots of fiber, so the stool is nice and soft. The whole theory behind not eating uh, nuts and not eating corn, that's actually been proven not to be the case. Things that are high in oils are very unconstipating or the bowel movements should be nice and soft. So it's actually been proven that that's a, what we call a medical myth and it's not true about popcorn association with diverticulitis. Um, so that's all I have to say about that. Hopefully I answer your questions and uh, I hope to hear more from you as a fan. If you have any other questions, suggestions, or comments, make sure you email me, carlooller at gmail.com or go on the Facebook, uh, DM, PM, whatever it's called and message me there, all right? Thank you so much and God bless. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you don't miss any new episodes.